I'm Hal Paulson at the University of New South Wales, um, and in this clip, I'll present a short briefing on the current, homeless, the current homelessness policy context in Australia. Much as in the UK, the last few weeks have seen extraordinary housing policy innovation and emergency spending in this policy area. State governments have suddenly found tens of millions of dollars for crash programs to rehouse rough sleepers into hotels and motels on an astonishing scale. Since March, an estimated 5,000 people have been rescued into temporary shelter across the country. And alongside that, um, and I think panicked by the vision of abrupt mass unemployment, which could trigger a national arrears crisis, state governments have enacted very, very quickly um, moratoria on, on rental evictions. The backdrop to all this is really the experience of the last 10 or 20 years, um, which has been a period in Australia of rising homelessness and rental stress. And that I think has created the conditions for the current crisis. And according to the most widely uh, accepted benchmark for measuring homelessness, which comes from the five yearly census, the, the point in time number of homeless people increased by 30% in the 10 years to 2016 to 116,000. Another way of gauging the growing scale of the homelessness problem that the country faces is the rising level of expenditure on, on homelessness services. And that has been increasing by 7% in real terms, year on year um, for the last few years. The prevailing view in Australia, even um, under conservative governments, does accept a degree of state responsibility for housing outcomes when it comes to the most disadvantaged. Maintaining a small social housing sector to help meet extreme need is, and including, including homelessness, of course, is generally seen as an unavoidable necessity. This is actually, a, I think, this is really more of a nuance to the broader conventional thinking that housing is a commodity that should generally be left to the market. Even before the COVID crisis, it's also fair to to, to recognise that some state governments were already embarked on stepped up action to reduce street homelessness. Um, New South Wales in particular um, stands out in, in that way. Um, in 2019, government uh, pledged to halve rough sleeping by 2025, and they formally signed up also to the Institute for Global Homelessness model as a means of, of, of achieving that target. The Government of South Australia is also on board for, uh, as one of the IGH in Institute of Global Homelessness vanguard cities on, um, on, on reducing homelessness. As far, in my opinion, these kinds of commitments don't in any way substitute for the national commitment that was made in 2008 to halve homelessness more broadly under the Rudd government, um, to halve homelessness over, uh, over a decade. That, sadly was abandoned in 2014 after a change of government. Um, but nevertheless, this, th these kind of more narrowly targeted um, ambitions um, of individual states, uh, as far as reducing homelessness is concerned, they're, they're, of, they're of course extremely welcome. The last few years has also seen growing Australian interest in new homelessness management concepts. Um, including the functional zero idea or the functional zero model, um, and also, of course, housing first. And nowadays, allegiance to housing first is, is very widely claimed by government agencies and NGOs alike. The term is used all the time. But the growing shortage of affordable rental housing that has affected Australia over the past decade seriously compromises the Sort of efficacy, the feasibility of Housing First in practice. A recent paper which reviewed Australian Housing First projects concluded that, and I'm quoting here, in all the programs examined, the aim of providing immediate housing was undermined by lack of quick access to affordable housing, with some unable to access even temporary accommodation. So, to come back to the present, we now have a situation where there are thousands of people temporarily rescued from street sleeping and homelessness shelters as well, who are at the moment safely housed in hotels, 
for the time being, um, but without any clear e exit strategy for the point when funding runs dry, which it will. Although no commitments have been made, it's very hard to envisage governments overseeing a return, a, a, a mass return to the streets for the vast majority um, of that cohort. And therefore, what is the exit, or what could be the exit strategy? We might be expecting that social housing um, ought to be able to take the strain of providing that move on, that move on accommodation. But this is a sector which in Australia is only a quarter the size of the UK. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's fractional by comparison. And since the 1990s, it's shrunk from 6% of all housing to 4%. More importantly, relative to population, the number of properties which are being let by uh, public housing agencies and community housing, that's not-for-profit housing providers, the number of, of, of lettings proportionate to population has halved since the 1990s. So um, it, wasn't, it was never a large sector, but it's now one which is um, even less able to absorb that kind of, the kind of shock that um, the current situation is, is, is creating. So in most jurisdictions, um, most states and territories, the sector doesn't have the capacity to offer long-term housing to all of the, these temporarily rehoused rough sleepers. Um, and although there's a growing clamour for a major social housing investment stimulus, uh, a programme to help kickstart economic recovery, the federal government has not yet given any indication that it will support such a plan. And even if it did, such an initiative is not going to be instant. Um, it certainly can't deliver instant properties. So it doesn't really address the, 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 uh, the immediate the, the, the immediate cha housing challenge um, for the temporarily rehoused rough sleeping cohort. In my opinion, um, this is really something which requires large scale head, a large scale head leasing uh, program. Um, and I, I think um, spot, re spot purchasing of property to do so is less, uh, is less of, of a, a desirable solution. Until now, there's also been little recognition, I think, that we're likely to face a new wave of homelessness. It's all very well to clear the current um, cohort from the streets, um, great, a great achievement to do so, but it's not a once and for all solution, of course. Um, so, and, and especially given this, the, the likelihood that the, the, the severe recession which we're facing over the next year or two, um, especially um, in the next six months, is likely to push, push tens of thousands of, of vulnerable renters and even some homeowners as well um, in, towards a housing crisis situation. Even as we speak, while current employment protection programs remain in place, and we have similar kind of um, programs in places in the UK, um, We've got jobless people who are receiving temporarily boosted dole payments. Um, we've got a, 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 a program called Job Keeper, which also um, subsidizes employers to keep um, former employees or current employees on their books while they're, uh, they're furloughed. But even while those programs exist, um, there are millions of non-permanent citizens uh, and also uh, casual workers who are excluded from those programs. And, Many of those people have lost work and will even now be being pushed rapidly towards a dangerous housing situation by that loss of income in sectors like uh, which have been completely shut down like hospitality and tourism. And when later on this year the, the crisis income support measures um, are ended or phased down then um, I think and also evictions moratoria are also supposedly going to come to an end, there must be a huge risk uh, of a fresh homelessness spike that will present Australian governments with a, a new policy challenge of a high order. So to finish, I'll just say I think that the hope must be that the pandemic housing crisis acts as a wake-up call for governments that have now, up until now, resolutely resisted the case that rising homelessness is a symptom of, of much more fundamental flaws in the operation of our housing system. 
this needs to include a recognition that a more proactive role for government in that system is essential, not just as an emergency response, but as a long-term commitment.